I'm here, yeah, making a video about Nimona. You've never seen that coming, right? Mostly because I don't really review films here. It's kind of like one of those things that um, I do when I have the time, but most of the times I'm actually collecting shells. Do you like shells? Here come the IMDb. Is that a bad joke? I, I literally just saw Men in Black for the first time and I, I definitely wish I hadn't just... Anyway, go see my movie. There's a lot of better jokes in it. I... I'm in. <laughs> No! Good, because this is not going to be a video about collecting shells. This is going to be a review of Nimona. It's going to be quite chaotic and weird as usual. You probably adjusted to that, right? Let's jump into it. I'm a straight person. Okay. What did you just say? No, let's not. Let's no. Not. Let's Carol, just calm. Let what did you just say? I'm straight. He said he's straight. So let's just all breathe through this. No son of mine okay, okay. will be straight. I don't know if you can see it just by looking at my bald head. I'm not saying that LGBT people are all not bald, right? No, I'm not saying that. But you can see it, right? I have that weird straight energy going on and I absolutely loved Nimona. <laughs> oh, I like where this is going. Let's break stuff. I really loved it and I'm quite surprised mostly because Netflix things are like 50-50 chance you're gonna hate them. Like it's either gonna be the best thing ever or it's gonna be the worst thing you've ever seen. When it comes to animation that's true as well. Like recently they released a series called Skull Island which was created from the people behind Castlevania and Blood of Zeus so a really interesting animation studio and it was incredibly bland when it comes to the story, when it comes to the look, the gore, the action sequences. It it was just there to bank on the IP, it was really obvious. And then sometimes Netflix actually does something quite interesting, they save projects. Netflix has been known in the last few years, but mostly before the pandemic, for saving projects that everyone was throwing into the trash. And this time around they saved Nimona, which was at the end of the day a Disney project that they trashed and they didn't want to save, they didn't want to work on it anymore. And I'm so glad because honestly I could almost see at the back of my mind where Nimona would be if it was made by Pixar or even Disney. It would be incredibly superficial, it wouldn't really have the edge that it has right now. It's kind of existing on the weird like line in between Arcane and a Disney Pixar movie. It has kind of like the tone of a Disney Pixar movie, meaning that some of the characters are kind of childish, the adults don't really act like adults at the end of the day. The animation style, it's also sometimes quite simplistic but also very bright and colorful like arcane for example let's uh, get into another position does this work much better yeah this is way more comfy it's actually not i don't know why i changed position something 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 we win. Yeah, Nimona, really fun, really enjoyed it. Should we analyze it a little bit? Because I feel like I'm not just gonna be sitting here and telling you like my straight perspective on what is probably like one of the best animated movies of all time and one of the best queer animated movies of all time. Can you just be you, please? I don't follow. Go, you. But I'm not a girl. I'm a shark. <sighs> Nimona is a really good example on how to do representation well. It doesn't really feel forced, it's also at the very core of the message and the themes that the movie is trying to explore, but at the same time it's not really hand-fisting you with them. You can really feel that the core of this movie is the representation, it's the fact that Nimona is kind of like a genderqueer character and it's really part of the story because she keeps changing shapes and turning into different animals animals, changing colors and changing the way that she's dressed, she's represented, the way that also she's perceived by other people and that's what makes her so interesting at the end of the day and that's what's also driving the narrative. She's the only person who's driving the narrative and without her most of the story starring this very stereotypical kind of like knight character I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have even happen. At the end of the day I'm pretty sure that he's so lame that he would actually end up going to prison and staying there for the rest of his life. If it was for Nimona who actually kind of like motivates change within the city, within all the different people who are there. Nimona started as the idea of this shapeshifter who could be literally anything, animal or person. 
I was struggling a lot with figuring out who you are and what matters to you in life and where you're going. And I didn't have a way of expressing those feelings. Nimona was a way of expressing those. Let's change position again. This is actually not comfortable. Yeah, this, oh, this is so much better. I love this. Wow. This is probably why I've shot almost a hundred videos in this position, just because it's really comfortable. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's, it's a good vibe. It's a good vibe. Nobody asked you here, but race! So let's address the themes of this movie, right? Of course, it's about being an LGBT person and existing and finding what your identity is, but also at the same time, not wanting to define yourself in a very stereotypical way, just so that people can feel more comfortable around you. There are a lot of scenes, for example, when the other main character is asking Nimona why they're not sticking to looking like a girl. And they answer that it's just boring. Why would they stick to actually looking like that when they can be so many other things all at the same time everything everywhere all at once coming back to it all the time yeah it's a really good movie I, I should probably rewatch it the thing that I loved about it is the fact that it doesn't really take the easy way out when it comes to representing all the different character dynamics the different relationship and stuff like that I can't be seen with that ah! this is quality sidekicking stuff it's too much. Oh, hon, clench your mustache. I love how colorful this universe is. And I love the fact that by the very end of the movie, it can go into really, really dark places. And those tend to be like the best animated movies. This is probably why people fell in love so much with the movie Inside Out. Because of the bing bong scene. And because of the idea of Riley slowly going into depression and losing herself. Losing like all her happiness, all her joy she used to have and all the other characters not being able to understand that they should embrace it in order to move forward instead of trying to avoid it or replace it by other feelings and we have the same thing here in the movie Nimona where in the final act I mean spoiler alert here let's start actually talking about details <laughs> Basically, Naimona transforms into a weird dark creature, which kind of represents all of the anxiety that they've been bottling up since the beginning of this story, the very beginning, so the origin where basically they met the other girl, all the different medieval lore that you know from this movie, that's where everything develops. And now they're finally like expressing all of that by transforming into this weird monster. And at the beginning, we feel like they're going for revenge, right? They're entering the town to destroy everything, or or at least to kill the main antagonist that the movie has set up since the beginning. But actually no, because we find out that they're going through all of these different streets and people keep like shooting at them, people keep trying to bring them down and it makes them feel even worse. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, I'm deciding to like use the pronouns they, them for Nimona because they seem to be like gender queer, and I'm pretty sure that if a character is telling you that they don't perceive themselves as a girl, that's what they mean. I mean, we, they don't really talk about pronouns in the animated movie, so it's kind of like a small parenthesis that I decided to choose for them. Let me know down in the comments if I'm completely wrong about it and if maybe I should use other pronouns. Having said that, they're going into town to commit suicide, to face with the statue with the old friend that they used to have when they were much, much younger, and to actually basically stab themselves with that statue and to kill themselves. Boy, that is... That is some dark shit. It's incredibly dark. I was sitting there being like, are they actually doing this? I feel like no one has ever done this. If you just look at all these standard animation studios out there, if you look at Blue Sky, if you look at Disney, if you look at Leica, maybe as well. Even though Leica tends to be a little bit more adult oriented, they actually addressed suicide within an animated movie. And I was kind of shocked, especially because Netflix has quite a lot of reach when it comes to its audience. So I'm like, you've got balls, Netflix, to actually talk about this kind of stuff because very often when they talk about mental health and very often when they talk about suicide you enter certain reasons why territory where it's just awkward it's really cringe and it's really awkward and you don't really know exactly what they're trying to say they end up saying so many things at the same time and the message is completely lost but no here it's kind of the end it's kind of like the perfect way of ending Nimona's story or even to start a new one because of course they have to deal with the pain 
pain, with the stress, with the anxiety that has been basically culminating to this moment right here. And this is also why the other main character faces them and they start having a conversation. And this is a beautiful moment when he says like, I see you. And this is probably the best possible moment to say, I see you. As in like, I see you as a person. I recognize that you exist and you want to be this way and you don't want to be perceived like everyone wants you to be perceived. I'm sorry. I see you, Nimona. And you're not alone. It's so much better than what they did in Avatar, for example. This is like the best, most version of the quote, I see you, in cinematic history, without a doubt. I want people to be reusing this scene for at least like 10 years, just to talk about that specific moment, you know? I see you. I see you. Oh, like shut up, you're so annoying! <laughs> So they have this confrontation and you understand that there is actual potential for people to change, for people not to perceive people like them as monsters anymore, but just to perceive them as different kinds of human beings. And of course, this is paired up with all the discussions going around with trans identities and the fact that people, especially in the US, they've been demonizing so much the trans community. So I feel like this is the perfect moment for a movie like this to come out. Honestly? I feel worse when I don't do it. Like my insides are itchy. You know like that second right before you sneeze? That's close to it. Then I shape shift and I'm free. Having said that, this movie is not perfect. Of course, I love the tone, I love the comedic aspect. Nimona is incredibly funny because she's kind of like riding the perfect line in between being childish and being an adult. She's dealing with a lot of stuff basically, like any teenager is, and it works perfectly in my opinion. 100% they're the standout character from this movie and the movie will not work without them. I mean, it's the title of the movie, so of course the movie will not even exist if it wasn't for Nimona. I hate to say it, but you make a pretty good bad guy. Having said that, I did have a bit of a hard time when it comes to the other characters, specifically the other guards, who kind of acted like spoiled teenagers or children just in general. Sometimes it felt like I was watching like a Winx episode where people just acted like they were 10 years old or they made jokes that were just not funny at all. So this is kind of like the weird things that this movie doesn't handle as well when it comes to the target audience and figuring out whether it wants to commit to being a movie about teenagers and about basically young adults or if it wants to like pull some children in because there is a lot of colors there's a lot of weird creatures a lot of action and a lot of booms at the end of the day <laughs> hey Mansley what? your uncle's head fell on my grandma's butt <laughs> oh my god that was so funny <laughs> Another thing that we might point out is also the fact that the structure of the movie is a bit weird. Maybe it's because like this movie was stuck in like production or post-production limbo for such a long time that they didn't really have the time to actually change the structure of the movie itself. But when you think about it, we have two different times where the main characters find themselves in the palace and they have to escape from it and it's a huge action sequence and it happens a second time as well. It doesn't really feel that original. It feels like we needed to explore the universe a bit more especially because the town itself it's so beautiful I feel like this one is one of the best movies when it comes to like putting together medieval lore and cyberpunk science fiction kind of aesthetic to it it's very colorful as I said of course if you liked arcane you're gonna love this movie as well and I'm pretty sure they did something clever when it comes to representing like the palace versus how the town actually is meaning that when it comes to the palace everything is very white everything is incredibly clean to the point that you almost feel like it's lacking detail there is no substance to it it's just there is no texture it just feels like you're entering like a very empty a very like emotionless place and it really feels like they're trying to do the same to the city while the city is very vibrant it's trying to be alive because it represents so many different cultures so many different people so I really like that contrast but I really love what they did when it comes to the story the universe and how basically the entire city 
slash kingdom is built on a huge lie the idea of protecting themselves from monsters i really like that i thought it was really cool and by the final act we actually start doing something different we start changing the foundations on which the society is built on which as we know it's something incredibly hard to do and that sometimes it doesn't work at all because if you just look at how governments are established if you look at how different treaties are drafted i mean the status quo very often is what we always come back to and it's really hard to shake the foundations of an entire society and change it from the ground up and this is something that nimona manages to do and it's kind of incredible and of course it's incredibly sad because we don't really know whether they're supposed to be alive by the end and we get that reassurance when the other main character who i will never remember the name because i'm so bad with names even though he had a really cute relationship with the other golden armor guy whose name i still don't remember but you know what i mean yeah they had a really cute relationship it was kind of like bromance but of course also an lgbt like gay story but it didn't really feel like they were performing for us meaning that we didn't really see them in like a very sexual way but we still understood all the affection that they had for each other and how they were in intimate moments without the need of like getting naked and having sex or something like that you know it's those tiny things that you don't really see in a lot of other queer movies it was kind of refreshing as well it's the kind of thing that you see also in other tv shows like heart stopper for example that kind of like cuteness that straight people are accustomed to because it happens so often to them especially when it comes to representation in movies and tv shows but it doesn't happen as much when it comes to queer folk so i'm really happy with how it turned out at the end of the day okay beauty head i love you bye bye that is basically it when it comes to Nimona because I think I've uh, I've covered about everything. So I think this review is over. Yeah, um, this was my straight reading of Nimona. And let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Did you like it? Is it already on your best movies lists of 2023? Are there things that you noticed that needed to be fixed? Or is this a perfect movie for you? For me, it was an almost perfect movie. This is not the end of the video, by the way, but like I'm just letting you see other things that you might find on my channel. There is this really cool things and then there is other cool thing as well the, the one right above me is what we're talking about next week just so you know because you can get prepared you know but that is basically it like those are all the weird things that you can find on my channel if you'd like let's go back to me like big me don't forget to like and subscribe every single like that you drop will go to nimona and every single creature that they have embodied across the entire movie let's support trans identities let's support being your true self and and in case you need to hear it, I see you. I'm Patrick, and this is Torn Apart. Hey, boss. Holy sh Da 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 da